Hello again, it's time for another project. Today I want to use this old frame that I've had lying around for a while now. It's actually 13 inches by 15. And what we're going to do is print off an image for the centre, which is 8 inches by 10 inches, and incorporate that into the centre using the ready-made framework. Basically just recycling anything that we've got lying around. Now obviously I've just removed the back from this, no problem. Just popped it out of the hat. You get these little prongs on. It could be pinned. Just a simple case of folding them over and it's all released. So that's our frame. We can keep that for later. That's basically made for us already. So we've got no issues with that. Now the idea is we're going to do some scroll saw work. I didn't quite like the backing. This looks like a cheap MDF. It's a bit flaky. So basically all I did was to cut myself... A bit of three millimeter ply this is recycled as well this comes off the drawers in a unit pine unit or the back of a wardrobe so everything's recycled if we can so nothing fancy i basically just put that on there and cut it to the same size so that's what we will use for scrolling on now we cut off our little template i just google search free stained glass effect Templates and I've come up with this dragonfly with a lily and some leaves here Ignore the line at the top That's original size. I've just extended this so it fits nicely Onto our board like so now the idea is we're going to cut out all the white sections So it's going to be a bit of a delicate operation Leaving basically the black lines and hopefully if we make it all the way without any disasters we will inlay these with the coloured resin to match in what we need pink green plenty of blues a bit of white for the uh, wings and hopefully if it's all still in one piece ideally we'll just basically pop it back into the frame like so and we might put the glass back in yet just for now though we'll just pop that on there just just to show you that fits nice and snug so that will be our finished item once we've cut it all out and inlaid it with resin. Like I say, you can put your glass back on top of that. Personally, I think it'd be nice just to leave it as it is so you can actually feel that as well. Okay, that's our general idea. First of all, we've got to attach it to our three millimeter plywood, we're gonna call it. For that, I'll simply use painter's tape. We'll cover this board with a painter's tape and then we'll spray on a bit of glue if you spray that on there and then stick that down, no problem whatsoever. Normally I use carbon paper and it would have been just as easy to draw this out and then go over the lines again with a sharpie or something, just to make them a little bit wider. It's got a delicate operation. We've got no time to mess about. We can soon knock one of those on if we're not careful. So we'll glue all that down and then we need to drill pilot holes, they call it, so into each one of these sections so we've got to feed the blade through on the scroll saw to cut out that section. And then we feed it into the next hole, cut out, cut out, and so on and so on. And hopefully it's still in one piece when we come to put our resin in. Right, I'll quickly get this ready and then we'll get to the scroll saw side of things. Right, we've glued our template onto our painter's tape. We've drilled all our pilot holes and we've cleaned the back off slightly. And that's it, that's ready to start cutting out now. Now down to blades for the scroll saw. It's just a personal thing. On your more cheaper saws, you get pin blades. They basically have a pin at both sides like so. Remember with your scroll saw blades, you want the teeth facing towards you. And they want to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up. And that way, as you feed your wood to it, you know you've got your blade in the right way. Now we would get away with this on this one. 
there's one little hole there maybe we just struggle to get in but the rest of these personally myself i like to drill the bigger the hole the better because i've got to feed that blade into that hole for underneath so why make a little little small drill hole the bigger the hole for me the better however those two there are going to be a bit tight to get this blade in so they come out with a pinless blade really fine work you might just about see this get that on there maybe and they're ideal because obviously there's no pins on the end and they will just fit into those little holes no problem whatsoever they're only more fancier saws and there'll be a clamp at top and a clamp at bottom to hold it in place person myself i like to use spiral blades they are spiraled the full length of the blade you can just about see it there good thing about spiral blades you can cut in any direction and they're ideal for larger projects where you won't have room to turn your wood round on the base of your scroll saw. Not everybody likes these and they take a little getting used to, but I prefer to use these against the standard straight blades as they call them. Those two there. So find a blade that ideally works for you. Downside with my little old drapper scroll saw in the corner there. I have to use these adapter clamps, spirals are pinless, so it's a case of me of putting the blade in there and I have to use an allen key to tighten it up and I hook that onto my saw top and bottom, similar to as if I was putting in a pin blade. It's a slow process and it's a bit of a pain sometimes but it does a job for what we want. Okay, we'll set this spiral blade in the scroll saw, we'll set it into our middle, middle cutout. When you do scroll sawing like this, always start off with your middle ones and try and work outwards if possible. Just gives you more of a wood to hold on to. If you start cutting all these outer sections first, you're just left with that thin black line. It's just going to be a bit fragile. So just think ahead, think about your bits. Sometimes the bits are that small that once you cut it out, you can put the bit back in place and put cellar tape over the top just to keep it there as a support for the either side, those thin lines there. Some people like to cover the full thing with cellar tape to hold it all in place better. They say it helps to lubricate the blade as it cuts. Person myself, I haven't any bother with this. So, right, let's set it up and we'll start cutting it out. Right, you can see from that, we've got our pattern on the saw. We've got our spiral blade in, Pegasus number five. It's a little bit big for this three millimeter wood, but it's all I have at the moment in time. So I'll get away with a five, all being well. You can see our adapter clamp on there, look. You get a tension bar at the back, or a knob, or a lever. Got a nice ping-ping sound. That means we're ready to cut. Okay, let's start cutting this one out. Right, you can see from that, we've cut out our first section now i'm not a scroller by any stretch of the imagination i'd rather do routing on these kind of projects and we could have routed out these areas just as easy and filled them in with resin but remember we're wanting some kind of stained glass effect but you will notice certain areas down the bottom here look we've not quite gone up to the line and there's a couple of little sections here missing don't be overly concerned about that once you pull your tape off nobody's going to be any wiser However, on these spiral blades, I like to go back and forwards like so. And you can nibble at that if you wanted to. And just make it a little bit nearer to the line. Back and forwards. So you're basically using the blade as a little planer come sander. I'll just show you on this one quickly without the noise. Hopefully too loud for you. Okay, that's near enough. You get the general idea. So we just nibbled away and made it somewhere near. But remember, it doesn't matter. Once you pull that tape off, this template, should I say, who's going to know if you've not made it up to the line or not? Just enjoy yourselves and don't get overly concerned. Right, we'll carry on and basically cut the rest of this out. 
I've just noticed there, look, and you will find it on certain projects. I've actually missed an hole out of there. So we'll pop another pilot hole in there so we can remove that section. Okay, let's crack on. Right, you can see from that we've made it all the way around that Pegasus number no. five spiral blade. Now remember, this is just cheap draw backer or the bottom of a drawer, so it won't be the best wood to cut. But it's, we've got through it. If you have one confession, I actually had a piece broken off. I think it's this section here. With my second cut, that piece broke off completely, but I managed to find it, and we've actually basically glued it back in place and continued with the cut and i certainly won't tell anybody if you don't so don't be disappointed if it breaks off if it's salvageable glue it back in and i cut the rest of it out afterwards i missed half a dozen of these pilot holes so certainly wasn't on the game that one but we've got what we want out of it now it's just a simple case of peeling off this template just do this nice and slowly. Don't get too excited and just start ripping it off. But like I say, it is a delicate piece. And you might just end up snapping something off at this stage of the game. You get the general idea from there. So we'll just go nice and steady. And just peel it all off. Don't get too excited. Just take your time. Obviously, once we've pulled it all off... I'm just going to get a little bit of sandpaper and just clean up this back like so. You can use files if you prefer file. Just give it a general cleaning up like so. Whichever works best for you. I've heard people actually get a little torch and just burn off these little nodules. It's not something I'd fancy doing. So I'll continue, put all this tape off and hopefully when we come back we'll be ready for painting this piece right that's all nicely peeled off see from that we'll give it a nice cleaning on the back literally a bit of sandpaper just take the little nodules off I actually tried an engraving bit on the dremel and just skimmed across like so but be a bit delicate with any power tools as such you can soon catch something and before you know it you've broken something off so to be safe Put it on a nice flat surface and just take your time and go down like that. Right, that's enough. Tidy up, cleaning up time. So we're just going to colour this wood black. Because we are doing, we are going for a stained glass effect. So we want it to look like lead piping or lead pieces in between, whatever they want to call it. And if I could just show you again, and I don't mind pointing out these things. You can just see a little, little black mark there and a little black mark there. That was that section that broke off. But it's on now. Once this spray goes on, I'm going to use spray today. Normally I use paint and touch black paint. Just a little cheap black gloss. Only because we've got a lot of sections to get inside there. It's just too much to put in with a brush. So I'm just going to hopefully just going to spray it and sort it out that way. So we'll give it a nice spray. Spray down. Make it nice and black. And then next time we come back, we'll be start filling this in with resin. Right, that's all nicely dry. You can see from that, a couple of sprays with that. And it certainly got into those side sections a lot easier. Now, an easier option would basically would just stick this to the same piece of wood of the same size. You could stick that down nicely and then fill in all your sections with your coloured resin. That would give you a nice block project. 
However, we are going to do a little stained glass effect. So obviously we want the light to shine through. So we're going to leave the backer clear for now. And for that, I like to use this clear book covering. This is fairly cheap to purchase. And it's a peel back, so you will basically peel the back off. It's nice and sticky. And what we do, we'll lay that on there downwards. Once we've cut it out to shape, obviously, to size. And then this will stick on top like so. And you would stick that down. And then we can fill all this in. And remember, that's going to be clear at the back because we've peeled off the paper. Now, to be safe, personally myself, I still like to brush on some clear resin on the back of this. Cover the old piece with resin and then stick that down onto the clear. Just helps a little bit. And I've tried it without it and your 99% seals it, but you will find the odd bit. And I've noticed, looking on the back here, you can't see it, but there's a little chip out there. And that's enough. If you put coloured resin in there, it's going to sneak its way through there into your other colour. So for the sake of five minutes of brushing on a little bit of resin, I'd rather play safe and make sure it's nicely stuck down. The resin for today is uh, Vista One, two part resin obviously. You get A your resin and B your Ardner. Just swap those around. You get A your resin, B your Ardner, and it's a mix by volume. Always check your labels. Some resins are by volume, some resins are by weight. As this is a volume, you basically want the same of A and the same of B. So I just use these cheap little plastic party cups. They're ideal. They do have little marks on the side, little grooves like that. And I just count up, let's say three of those. Remember, we're only mixing enough to do the back of this. Three of A and three of B. And I'll simply just mark it off like so. There's your A for your resin. And we've got exactly the same three I for the Adner. Measure the two off, mix them both together, and then I'll just simply get a brush and we'll brush it onto the back of here and stick it onto the clear covering. I'll mix this off camera because it's just standard stuff. Put gloves on, plenty of ventilation, and always wear a nice mask. And for mixing purposes, just cheap, cheap plastic party knife and forks. These are ideal because you can mix it around with that and they have a nice scoop in the back there. Should you want to take it, scoop some up and you can feed that in. You'll see this being used later when we start filling this all in. I say, okay, should I say, <laughs> I'll uh, mix the resin up, come back and then we'll be ready to brush it on and then we'll stick this down and then we'll come back in 24 hours and then we'll start filling this one in. Right, there's our little bit of resin all nicely mixed up. Remember, we're only just using this as a glue to stick the cutout template onto the back of the clear sealant. And if I can just show you that quickly, the hardest part about this is finding a corner to peel off. So basically all I've done was cut it to size and you peel it off like so. And I've just stuck it down on there with a bit of sellotape in each corner just to hold it in place. And there's our bit of, bit of paper that's ready to go in the pin. So that's all nicely in place. Remember, we're going to stick that down onto that. But to be safe, we're just going to seal the back with some, just some clear resin. Now you could put it on with this plastic knife if you wanted to. And that would be a case of just rubbing it along like this. It doesn't have to be fantastic, but you want to make sure you, you get it all. Don't worry if it goes down the sides or anything. Remember, if we turn it in, turn it around the opposite way, should I say, it'll sort of find its own level. And if you're not too sure where you've gone, you just angle it right. You can see that nice shine on there. And you know where you want to be. If this was slightly thicker, we could have just stuck that straight down there and put our resin inside. But obviously you're going to lose a lot of resin by filling this all in with clear and then topping up with coloured resin afterwards. So the way I do it is literally just to go like that and cover the full piece. If you're not too comfortable with the plastic, you have to sacrifice a little brush and just do it exactly the same way with that, like so. And like I just said, if you just tilt it, you can just see where you've got this shine and where you haven't. You've got plenty of time, don't panic about things, it's not going to go on you. It'll take you five minutes to cover this. 
Okay, I'll cover all this and then come back when we're ready to pop it onto our clear book covering. Right, you just about see a shine on that, so that's all nicely coated now. So it's just a simple case of sticking it down onto our clear covering. Nothing too fancy. This stuff does peel off afterwards if you want to. However, I just prefer just to leave it on. So we just drop that on there like that. Press it all the way around, keep it nice and flat. And that's it, that's all we can do for now. So we've hopefully got a nice clear backer stuck on there. And you can put a bit of weight on there if you wanted to, just to keep it in place overnight. And we'll come back tomorrow and basically just start filling this all in. Right, it's the next day. That's all that nicely sealed on there. You can just see from that, we've got our nice little backer sorted and hopefully that will stop any leakages from one section to the other. If you're not too sure, you could fill one, miss a section, fill one, miss a section, and that'll just give you enough time to see if anything's leaking through. But looking at that, I would say we're good to go. Now I'm just gonna literally just pop it on a little piece of tray there, a mat or whatever it is, just so when we filled it up nicely, we can carry it away without any issues. So there's our piece all ready to fill in now. Now it's the same procedure as before. Vista one resin. Remember, we've got our two cups, A and B. I'd rather mix small amounts. Remember, we're going to get double of that. I've gone up four little markers, so it will be eight by the time we're done. And then I'll transfer little bits into separate cups, and then we'll mix our separate colours and hopefully fill in as we go along. We can always mix a little bit more further down the line, which is a lot better than mixing too much and not having enough. And I also have little side projects, a little fish mould there, which I'll keep to one side. And any leftover resin, we can literally just fill it in and get a nice little fish like that. And there's another one. So little things to one side, don't waste any resin if you can. And I'll literally just top those up and see what they're like at the end. Right, so imagine we've mixed our resin as always. I'll do that off camera. Now the colours I'm going to use, just cheap acrylics. We won't need a lot of this in. Remember, we are still going for a stained glass effect, even though I will actually be putting this in a frame on the wall. There is other colours out there. You can get dyes, pigments, powders. There's plenty to go out at, and I've certainly got them all here. Obviously, with it being a stained glass effect, we want a little bit of light to come through, so we don't want it too thick, even though I do like solid colours myself. So, like I say, we've mixed our resin. It was just a case of dropping a little bit of this in, give it a nice good mix round, and then we'll start filling this in. I'll come back in a minute once I've got the resin ready. Right, we've mixed up our little bit of resin for now. Basically, that's nice and ready to go now, and I've literally just transferred some into a, another container. Now, it's pure guesswork on how much we need. I'm hoping this will be enough to cover the wings on our dragonfly. If not, we can literally just add a little bit of clear and give it a mix and make it a little bit weaker. Now you don't need a lot of this. Let's find somewhere to put that. Obviously, like I said, we don't want it too solid, too thick, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to chance a little bit for now. Whoops, that, that left a zoo. That's enough now. I certainly don't think we're going to need any more than that. And hopefully that's just enough to colour the resin, but make it enough uh, transparent is the word I'm looking for. So we can still see the light through it. So a quick mix round, quick as we can. What I'll do, I'll do the first bit and then we'll fly through it all and fill it in as we go along. Because once you've done one section, it is just a simple case of filling and filling. Now remember with these spoons, we've got that little scoop on the end there. So if you wanted to scoop that out, you could put it in like so. And then scoop another piece out and put it in like so. 
obviously once you start filling these up get yourself a little cocktail stick and we're just gonna feed it along the way like so we get the general idea from that don't we i'll just put a bit more in these Now I don't want to go quite level with the actual template we've cut out and resin will shrink slightly once it's curing so remember that it's somewhere near the top and then that just allow us to allow for the shrinkage okay we see from there what we're after and obviously I've got a bit of white left over. We can use that and just have a little bit of blue in there and get a nice, nicer blue and start filling in another one of these sections. And there you get our little cocktail stick and just feed it across like so. And you can leave this, you can do three or four colors and then put it to one side and come back tomorrow if you wanted to and continue filling the rest in. That way we'll know our piece of plastic at the back has done it served its purpose and we've got no leaks okay i'll carry on filling this in and hopefully when we come back we'll be somewhere near okay right well that worked out okay for the white spot on with that one you don't get it right every time so we've got no wasted so far so that's it for that one. As you put each colour in, get yourself a little lighter, preferably one that works, and just skim over the top like so. Just a little bit on each one. And you can do this two or three times as we go through the project. And hopefully that will help just remove any of those little air bubbles that we've got inside the resin. That's all it takes. You'll see them disappear. It's hard to see on the camera that they are disappearing. Okay, that's all we can do. We'll move on to the next colour and so on and so on. Right, that's it. We've finally got that filled. Not had any issues of yet. It's totally different when we see it in the daylight. So that's all nicely done. So we just do our last little skim over with the lighter. Just get rid of, of those bubbles. And that's it. We'll leave this for a good 24 to 48 hours. The thing with resin, the thinner and smaller the piece, the longer it takes to cure. And this is only less than three millimetres, remember, for our actual scroll saw bit that we cut out. So it's going to take a good couple of days to be firm enough to take it away from the back of wood, shall we call it. But you would give yourself a good couple of weeks. They do reckon 30 days for resin to cure completely. But that's just... Uh, Something you can research on. Okay, put it to one side. We'll put a nice cover over it. We'll come back in a couple of days and we'll see what we've got. Right, it's a couple of days later. And everything's fine. Definitely near enough for what I want. I literally got a sharp knife and just cut off the plastic backer. And I've left that stuck on. I have peeled it off in previous projects and it will come off. But I just can't see the point of taking it off. You can actually use that project both sides. If you prefer a smoother finish like that, or like myself, I like to feel those cutout sections on the front section there. Now, the only issue I did find, we've got these darkened bits in the blue colour seems to be the worst. And then a little bit down there. I'm not overly concerned about that. What I think that is, is the acrylic paint. I have not mixed it proper. So... I rushed myself a bit or I must have got called away and come back. And therefore the resin 
the acrylic paints haven't been mixed proper but that's nothing major is it really it's not the end of the world on that one that's for sure and that's it now remember it's a stained glass effect but i'm going to put it in a frame and it will end up on a wall now you could put this in a window however with uv light sunshine and stuff these colors will fade eventually and it doesn't matter if it's acrylic paints powders inks whatever you want to use once that uv light the sunlight gets on it they will fade in time now this is quite dark this one so i suppose as it fades it will get more looking like glass if that makes sense to you so lucky for us we're not going to put it in the window but i will show you a shot a photograph just so we can see the stained glass effect but for me it's going to go back in our frame remember there's our frame there now you could take it with the glass out leave the glass in just blow a bit of the dust away i'm going to leave the glass in for now but you could have it with or without i suppose so it's just a simple case popping that back in there like that should be a nice snug fit there we go remember you could use it on both sides it doesn't matter and if you wanted to you could also put on the original backer like like so and if you just fold over your prongs and you're back in business again but i'm going to remove that backer in a minute just so we can see the stained glass effect and that would be our finished project like so and i'm happy that with the glass on obviously you don't have the glass on if you don't need to i'll just show you quickly in the window without the backer on just so we can see the stained glass effect that we're looking for right and that's it just rested in front of the window on my shed and you've got the light coming through nicely from the back obviously the brighter the sunshine your co the colors will be slightly different it obviously looks more pinky with the sun and the the blue there and obviously as you, as you bring it away just do it without dropping it you'll see the coloration now i've took the glass off there so that's it without the glass on as well and that's our stained glass effect right let's go back to the table right that's it then this little project is finished now the inner piece comes in at 8 inches by 10 inches and the recycle frame is 15 inches by 13 inches we cut it out on 3mm plywood I'm going to call it basically the stuff that you find on the bottom of a drawer or the back of a nice wardrobe and that's it so all recycled materials we then use a pegasus number no. five spiral blade to cut it all out and then we inlaid it with resin mixed with acrylic acrylic paint remember it's a stained glass effect but for me i'm just going to use it as a picture on the wall so i put it back in the frame without the glass and i put the original backer back on and then literally just bend those prongs over and that keeps it all nicely secure in place and that's it this little project is finished thank you very much for watching